What's up everybody, it's Sai, and today we're going to be learning three GoPro color grading techniques to help your footage look a bit more cinematic and a bit less artificial. We're going to then take those three techniques and color match your GoPro footage to footage shot from another camera, in my case a Fujifilm X-T4. This is especially useful when you've got a variety of cameras plus some GoPro footage and you're trying to match the color of all your clips to create a more cohesive, more powerful, and just a better told story in video. So grab that tea, grab that coffee, grab some water, whatever it may be, let's get started. All right, everybody, so now we're in Adobe Premiere Pro, and for our very first tip, we're going to be adjusting the color saturation of our clips. So right here in my timeline, I have four sample clips that I've chosen, and I want to kind of change the color tones in this clip. So to do that, we're going to go to our Lumetri color panel, and if you don't have that open, you're going to want to go to the color tab up here, and you can also go to window and select Lumetri color to open this panel up. From here, you can adjust the basic correction if you need to, but we're gonna go to curves for what we need to do today. You're gonna select the eyedropper tool and then let's click on a green. We kind of want to make it a bit more fuller, more deep. This is a, a rainforest in Olympic National Park. So we kind of wanna amplify, emphasize those greens. I'm gonna click on this uh, line right here to also bring up this section of the green uh, spectrum to bring in more of those deeper, fuller emerald greens. On the flip side, the path is a little too red for my taste, so I'm just going to take an educated guess and try to bring down that red a little bit. So you can go all the way down here, or you can maybe do a little bit less, like let's say here. And then there's a lot of orange and yellow in here, so let's just experiment and maybe bring those up. So yeah, you can see most of the clip is very yellow, so that's a bit much. So let's just bring that up a tad. And since I saw the orange and yellow and how much it affected the clip, you can go back to basic correction and you can kind of maybe pull the temperature a little bit towards the blue since it's so yellow. And it's also reflected here in your Lumetri scopes. As you can see, the clip is very yellow. So it could even go further on the blue, but I'm gonna keep it a little bit more yellow because I think that looks better. So for our next clip, something that kind of bothers me with GoPro footage is that I feel like the GoPro makes the sky especially very... It makes the sky this kind of artificial fake candy blue. So I generally like to kind of bring that down. It's a very easy fix using the Hoover Sat again. And you just bring that down. And already that just looks more realistic. So moving on from this clip, we're going to go right here. And I shot these on the low saturation uh, color setting on the GoPro, but even then it's still just a bit too blue for my liking. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Just kind of reduce that a bit. And to me, that looks a lot better. And here, here's just another case, the same thing where the sky looks like cotton candy and we want to kind of bring that down just like that. So for tip number two, we're going to be using curves again, but instead of using the Hoover set, we're going to be using the RGB curves window. So I've brought my first effect where we adjust the color saturation in the first tip over so we can kind of build upon that. So for this tip, it's very um, easy to do. You have this white line here and the white stands for the light and darkness of the clip. So we can kind of adjust the shadows and the highlights like so by making a small S. And as you can see, it's uh, just amplified the contrast between the light and the darks of this clip. And this effect just generally works on more well-lit uh, scenarios, more well-lit scenes. 
like let's take this one for example i don't think we're gonna bring it down and do the kind of s as we would for the previous two clips because it's already so dark so for this one we use curves to kind of lighten up the overall scene and shadows like so to kind of just bring in a little bit more of this if you wanted less of that silhouette effect So what I do with adjustment layer masks is I use it to kind of manually lighten or darken a portion of your clip to kind of create a bit more ambiance or mood or to emphasize something. So I've already pre-built out two as it kind of takes a bit of time. So I will show you what happens when I turn off this layer. So I use the mask here to kind of uh, tone this down a bit, as you can see. Very subtle, but it kind of just kind of tones down the brightness a little bit. And over here, I kind of use the mask to um, emphasize the object or the person walking, snowshoeing. So it's subtle, but it makes a big difference when you apply it consistently to a lot of your clips to kind of just draw the viewer's attention to certain things. So we're gonna make two over here. So you're gonna wanna create an adjustment layer. I already have one here, but if you don't, you're gonna wanna click into this window so that it's selected. You're gonna go to File, New, Adjustment Layer. So I'm just gonna drag mine over here since it's already there. And so what I like to do is I like to usually make a square or a circle depending on what I'm trying to kind of mask out. And in this case, I want to make the forest appear a little bit more moodier, a bit more darker. So I kind of drew my mask using the points so you can kind of click into it and drag it. to lower the exposure by just a smidge and you see this harsh line here so we're gonna have to feather that out Let's say 300 and you can't really tell it just kind of blends in and you can take that a step further by lowering the shadows on your curves as we learned in the second tip and I think I quite like that as you can see, the forest trees are now a bit darker and that contrasts with the figure in the foreground. Moving on, so for this one, we are going to do the opposite, where we want to kind of brighten the foreground. So we're just kind of draw out our mask very loosely, and then we're going to raise shadows using curves. Maybe bring up the highlights a bit, bring up the exposure, and let's see how much we can get away with. Let's try 450. And as I said before, these are all very subtle um, tricks that you can use. So if we turn this off, you can see it's much darker. Bring it on, it almost looks like it should be that way after you've done it. So those are adjustment layer masks in a nutshell. It's a great way to kind of bring more cohesion to your clip or emphasize an object or a person moving in your clip just to bring more visual attention and focus. Do you know what time it is? I don't know. Do you? I think it's bonus tip time. So for today's bonus tip, we're gonna be color matching our GoPro footage to, let's say, footage shot from a mirrorless camera, in this case, my Fujifilm X-T4. But I want to kind of match the GoPro footage to the Fuji footage to kind of keep them consistent and to make the GoPro footage a bit more cinematic and just create more overall cohesion in my video. 
So we're gonna be using all three tips that I went over earlier to kind of make this happen. For this one, we're just gonna look at both of them real quickly. And I'm gonna turn off my adjustment layer mask for now, just so I can get a better idea of what I'm working with. So we have a lot of orange in the GoPro clip and a lot less orange in the Fuji clip. So let's try to tone down a bit more of the orange. Maybe a little bit more yellow as well. Something that I've noticed is that GoPros generally tend to overcompen overcompensate on the oranges. The clip is a bit more cooler, but we have our masks, so we can't forget that. The greens are a bit more of a, like a faded, rusty green, rather than this kind of like bright Green. So we're going to go down in our curves panel once again, and we're going to go to hue versus hue, which means basically um, color versus color. So we're going to use our eyedropper and click onto that green, and as you can see, it kind of changes the tone of that green real quickly. So you can really go off the rails really easily. But we're just going to kind of play with it so it kind of takes that sort of artificial green color off. So maybe like right there, where it's a bit more faded. And then we're gonna go to hue versus luma, which literally means color lightness or color brightness. So we're gonna go back to that same green, click on it, and as you can see, it kind of changes the brightness of it. So in the Fuji clip, they're a bit more dull that. That looks, looks better. It's a bit more dull, less artificial. Let's turn on the mask and see what we're working with. Let's turn this mask a bit up. And as you can see, while it's not perfect, we're a lot closer to the kind of cinematic look that the Fuji film has. And you have that less artificial feeling from the GoPro. So yeah, I think that's a pretty good match for five minutes of work. So for our second color matching example, we have some footage from Last National Park. Great place, by the way. So here's our GoPro clip. Here's our Fuji clip. As you can see, the skies are pretty different, so we want to get that a bit more in the same ballpark. So if you went back to your hue versus sat curve line, you can see just by bringing it up, that won't do the trick. That actually makes it worse. So I think for this one, the hue versus luma panel will probably work pretty nicely. We want to darken that tone of blue as much as possible before it gets a bit more unrealistic. So just by doing that, we've kind of achieved the same tonality, which in most cases will be good enough. And then you can kind of adjust the hue versus hue just a bit. there has a little turquoise that has a little turquoise and there we go
Whew, that was a lot, wasn't it? But you can now take those four tips to help elevate your GoPro footage in color grading. You now know how to color grade your GoPro footage to help make it look more cinematic and a little less artificial. You can then take those clips and color match it to clips shot on different cameras, which is especially useful when you've got a lot of different cameras with you, like on a hike or on a shooter somewhere. If you've liked this video, please consider checking out my GoPro settings video. It's got a bunch of awesome tips and tricks on how to achieve higher quality and less shaky GoPro footage. And please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really means a lot to me and I'm on my journey to a thousand subs, so would, re would really appreciate it. And as always, get out and explore. You never know what you're going to find. I'll see you guys next time.